Hello everyone and welcome to yet another recap. Today I'm covering the Oscar-winning film, The Shape of Water, released in 2017. Okay then, let's dive in. The movie begins with the narrator warning us about the truth behind the story he's about to tell us. We begin with our lead, Elisa Esposito, who is woken up by her alarm and she begins her day with a little me time. She visits her neighbor Giles, a gay painter who is out of work because of his orientation. We also learn that Elisa is mute, so she has to communicate through sign language. She is shown to be a cheerful person, but is also very lonely. She does have a friend at work though, Zelda Fuller. They're both cleaning ladies in a top secret US lab that conducts confidential experiments. One day, the security team, led by Richard Strickland, brings in a highly sensitive acid to the facility, and it appears to be an amphibious creature. Elisa takes a peep, and the amphibian angrily reacts to her, so she and Zelda are taken away immediately. Later, Giles and Elisa go get some pie because Giles seems to have a crush on the cashier at the pie shop. They seem to have a very strong friendship, but Elisa still doesn't have any love in her life and her days pass like clockwork. One day during work, she and Zelda have a brief conversation with Richard in the men's room and Elisa notices that his stick has blood on it. Later, they see Richard bleeding after he is attacked by the amphibian. They are brought on to clean the scene, which has been splattered with blood, and Elisa also finds Richard's chopped fingers. Zelda goes to fetch their boss, Fleming, and suddenly, Elisa comes face to face with the amphibian. There seems to be a small connection between them, but he swims away after Fleming drops by. Elisa tells Giles about this, but he doesn't believe her and is more interested in getting his old job back. The next day, she tries interacting with the amphibian again and offers him an egg. He is a little skeptical at first, but then he takes the egg and dives back inside. Zelda and Elisa are called to meet Richard who acts like a jerk and tells them not to mess around while cleaning the amphibian's area. However, Elisa still continues to interact with the amphibian by feeding him more eggs and even playing music for him. The amphibian reacts positively to her gestures and she begins to develop a fascination for him. They slowly bond over time, but unfortunately, the main scientist, Robert Hofsteiter, spots them. He actually turns out to be a spy for the Russians and his real name is Dmitri. He tells his team about what he's seen and suggests that they should try to steal the amphibian as soon as possible. The next day, Elisa finds the amphibian injured and wants to help him, but Richard comes back again to torture his prisoner. She hides, but she drops an egg that Richard spots. Luckily, he doesn't pay much attention to it. His superior, General Hoyt, comes in to check up on the amphibian and they discuss how to kill him after a vivisection. Dimitri doesn't like the sound of that, so he gets into a slight argument with Hoyt. It doesn't work in his favor, but he manages to spot Elisa hiding in the corner. Elisa goes back home and tells Giles that she wants to free the amphibian, but he thinks it's ridiculous. She even makes a case that they have a strong relationship, but Giles is only interested in getting his old job back. They have a small argument and then he leaves. However, his work gets rejected so he goes to get more pie. Even there, his crush turns out to be a racist and a homophobe, so he goes back to Elisa and offers to help. They sit down and come up with a plan. Meanwhile, Dmitri asks his Russian counterparts to help him save the amphibian, but they only offer him the option to kill the creature because they don't want the Americans to use him for the space race. Richard gets himself a new car and enjoys all the attention he gets from it as he enters the lab. Elisa acts a little suspicious and it makes Zelda think that she's up to something. Richard calls Elisa to his office and shamelessly harasses her, but she manages to run away from him. Now, Dimitri tries to reason with Richard to delay the operation, but he only demeans him and refuses to listen to what he has to say. Dimitri notices Elisa moving the security cameras but remains quiet because he's got a new plan now. He finds Elisa with the amphibian and helps her escort him outside in a cart. He also plants a device that disengages all the electricity at the lab. As Elisa makes her escape, Zelda confronts her and tries to stop the plan, but eventually helps her friend. 
Giles runs into some trouble with the security guard as he tries to enter the lab, but Dimitri takes care of that issue and helps Eliza and the amphibian into his van. They make their escape after crashing into Richard's new car and avoiding some bullets. The Americans learn that their asset has been stolen and Richard is put under pressure by Hoyt to fix this mess. Back at her place, Elisa is able to keep the amphibian alive using Dimitri's advice and plans to release him into the canal when it starts raining. Now, security measures have been increased at the facility and everyone is supposed to present identification upon entry. Zelda and Elisa are questioned by Richard and after a little outburst, he lets them go when they plead ignorance. Back at her place, the amphibian gets out of his tub while Giles is asleep and eats his cat when it hisses at him. When he is caught, he panics and runs away after accidentally injuring Giles. He immediately calls Elisa and tells her what happened, so she goes out looking for the amphibian. Luckily, she finds him watching a movie inside the empty theater downstairs and brings him back. The amphibian feels bad about what he's done, so he places his hand on Giles' bald head and wound, he seemingly uses some powers and then goes back to the bathroom. At the facility, Dimitri is questioned by Richard who now suspects him of not being who he claims to be. However, he doesn't take any action just yet. His reattached fingers also start to turn blue. Meanwhile, the amphibian gets a little close to Elisa and while she's initially hesitant, she gets intimate with him later. Now, Dimitri meets with his people and lies about killing the amphibian. He suspects that he might be in danger, so he equips himself with a knife. But nothing dangerous happens and his people tell him that they will prepare his extraction soon. Richard's fingers continue to bother him back at home when he's with his family, but he can't do anything about it. Elisa and the amphibian continue to engage in physical love, but it leads to the bathroom getting flooded and the water starts dripping into the theater below. The owner of the theater calls up Giles to complain about it, so he goes to confront Elisa. But then he notices that his hair has grown back and his wound has also healed. This makes him realize that the amphibian has healing powers. He finds the lovers hugging and decides not to interrupt them as he is in a good mood. Dimitri gets a call telling him that his extraction will be ready soon, so he prepares for his transfer as it begins to rain. This also means that it's time for Elisa to send the amphibian away, but now she doesn't want to let him go. Back at the facility, Richard is warned by Hoyt to get the amphibian back within 36 hours, otherwise he's in for a world of pain. At home, Elisa makes some dinner for the amphibian but can't hold back her feelings, as she knows they have to say goodbye soon. It turns out that he has managed to slightly heal her voice box and she's able to whisper that he'll never know how much she loves him. However, the amphibian starts to grow weak and it worries her. She calls Zelda over and she suggests that they should drop him in the canal soon. Richard's fingers start to turn black and they also give off a foul smell, but all he cares about now is going after Dimitri who has gotten the call to meet his Russian counterparts. Unfortunately, Dimitri is shot by a handler and is about to be killed, but Richard manages to reach just in time to kill the handlers. Realizing that Dimitri is a spy, he tortures him to reveal who stole the amphibian. After a slight struggle, Dimitri reveals that it was the cleaning ladies before bleeding out. Richard rushes to Zelda's house and threatens her to reveal the location of the amphibian. She doesn't say a word, but her husband spills the beans and Richard leaves immediately. Realizing there isn't much time, Zelda warns Elisa about what's happened and tells her to get moving immediately. Elisa, the amphibian and Giles are able to get out of the house before Richard can make it there. But the crazed villain learns about their location after spotting Elisa's calendar that has crucial information written on it. Giles and Elisa reach the canal and bid farewell to the amphibian, but it's too hard for Elisa to say goodbye. The lovers exchange one last glance, but then Richard gets there and knocks down Giles, after which he shoots Elisa and the amphibian. 
The lovers fall next to each other and Elisa places her hand on his before passing out. Giles gets up and knocks Richard down temporarily with a beam and rushes to Elisa. The amphibian quickly heals from his wounds and slits Richard's throat. He lies on the floor and dies shortly after Zelda arrives with the cops. With no other means of escape, the amphibian takes Elisa with him and jumps into the water. He uses his healing abilities on her and she comes back to life. He has also managed to give her gills to breathe underwater and they embrace each other, finally together for good. The movie ends with Giles narrating that he believes they lived happily ever after. And there you go guys, that was The Shape of Water, recapped by yours truly. It was a great film that showcased great themes and even got me emotional for a minute. Anyway, drop some suggestions in the comments and I might check them out later. Like, share and subscribe if you're new around here to show some love. Okay then, I'll see you soon in my next video.